Welcome to a special Legends and Leadership. I'm Jack Myers, special because I'm here with two guests, Marla Kaplowitz, President and CEO of the 4As, and Matt Dorella, CEO of Catalyte. And we're here for a very important conversation uh, that, Marla, I'm going to let you describe uh, the details. But, Marla, you have been uh, throughout your career, but especially as President and CEO of the 4As, an incredible industry-wide advocate for diversity in the industry and really looking at the acquisition part. How do we bring talent in? How do we find new talent, develop new talent, and go outside of the norms? And in that context, you've entered into a partnership uh, with Matt and Catalyte. Matt will be drilling down a little more into the Catalyte, uh, the work you're doing there, uh, a little bit about your own background with uh, both Google and the company formerly known as Twitter. Uh, but Marla, can you tell us about the relationship and why uh, we both agreed that it's so important for you to share it widely with as much of the industry as you possibly can? Sure, and I just wanna thank you for the opportunity because Matt and I are incredibly passionate about this partnership. And so the opportunity to tell more people about it is so critical. I'm gonna go back to a year ago when I had been communicating with our board about what we needed to do to identify ways to address the ongoing talent gap that is not only impacting our industry, but industries across the globe. And we recognized that we needed to start thinking differently about how we bring in new talent into this business. We've long been a very uh, insular industry, connecting people with like minds, and we need to expand and bring in different types of people. And we've been very focused at the 4As and the 4As Foundation on race and ethnicity as one aspect of diversity, bringing more people into the pipeline. One of the areas we have long ignored is people with socio, different socioeconomic backgrounds. And we started looking into opportunities to create an apprenticeship program because more and more people, you can look at the statistics, are choosing not to go to college or don't have the financial means to go to college. You look at the burden of what a two or even four year education costs. And so looking at other European countries, they have very high percentages of apprenticeship programs. So we started to look at what we could do to build within the forays and apprenticeship offering and recognize that one, it's complex and it can also be very expensive. And we started thinking it might be better in this instance to partner. And we looked at a number of different companies that already had apprenticeship programs in place. And we felt that Catalyte was the best partner for us because not only were they going out and identifying the top talent in any market, but they were identifying people from different backgrounds. Some may have some form of college experience or not, but they're they're really having very different lived experiences. They're a little more mature and they are hungry to learn and to grow. And Catalyte does it in a way that accelerates that learning in generally an eight, depending upon the topic, maybe 12 week time frame. And you can have them start in an agency from day one with that accumulated knowledge ready to go. That's very different than someone who is fresh out of school, who then has a lot of time that needs to happen in terms of training on the ground. So we've been really fortunate to partner with Catalyte. We announced this partnership fairly recently. We have so much interest from our agencies. They've already been working with different agency partners on the media side, and we are now partnering with Catalyte to expand cohorts beyond on digital media or analytics, looking at areas like project management, account management, and we're going to continue to grow that. So that's a lot of the high level. And Matt can tell you even more details because when he starts telling you stories of the people whose lives have been changed, it's truly moving. Over to you, Matt. How lucky am I to have a partner like Marla Kaplowitz and the 4As? Um, she's uh, always more articulate than I am about what we do. And I love that. Um, yeah, listen, the partnership, 
birds of a feather. We have a, both have a shared interest and belief that talent is everywhere if you know how to discover it. Um, and one of the great things about our industry is, is how um, there's some incredible relationships that I think underpin our industry. But I think the other side of that is that it also can lead to some limiting of the talent that actually is in our industry. And we've seen that in the data. And the forays has been incredible about sort of bringing that data to, to the fore and making sure that we address these issues. Um, one of the wonderful things about the partnership is um, we're both passionate about solving this problem and getting the best talent in to our industry, no matter where people come from. Um, but the 4As brings an incredible amount of understanding about what the advertising agencies need. And, you know, Marla touched on it. We started in digital uh, media. Uh, obviously, it's a, one of the higher growth areas within the sort of media space on the agency side. And we've had a tremendous amount of success. Um, we started as a pilot. And over the last year and a half, I had over 150 apprentices come through working with uh, the largest holding companies as well as, you know, many independents. And uh, a stat that I was just sharing with me that I'm really proud of, of those 150 people that have come through uh, our apprentice program, 100% of them are there a year later. So the retention is super uh, amazing. And, and to give you a sense of the, the backgrounds of the people that we're able to, to bring in the industry, I mean, you have folks that are everything from college graduates, as Marla mentioned. Um, we have people that uh, have teacher's degrees and nurse's degrees that have wanted to get into the agency world. We have folks that are working in the service industry who have run retail stores, um, you know, worked at, um, as security guards. I mean, it's pretty incredible. And the, the thing that's sort of consistent across all of the apprentices that we've worked with is that they have a real sense that they want to get into jobs that are like 21st century jobs, jobs that give them the opportunity to have a level of financial independence for them and their families um, that they never would have had necessarily otherwise. And, you know, um, they're inc incredibly talented, you know, the, the conversion rate. So of, of the people that actually go through our program and go to uh, an agency, 90% convert to full time. So they're obviously very, very talented. And if you're an employer, uh, you know, like a WPP or a publicist, um, it's pretty wonderful to be able to get a really go from talent pools to talent oceans, because now you're suddenly opening up the aperture to an entirely new group of people that otherwise uh, maybe you wouldn't have had a chance to talk to. Um, they come day one ready, as Marla said. So uh, in the large majority of cases, 95% plus, they're actually billable on day one. So this is actually like a really good business decision. You know, uh, this isn't just a feel good thing, although it happens to be that too. Really, it just makes a lot of business sense. And the way the apprenticeships work, again, they're, Marla hit it, like it's so popular in Europe. We're a little behind the curve in the US. Um, we have a sort of a bias toward internships, which can be great, but apprenticeships are really wonderful because one, they happen all year round. Um, they a much larger pool of people that you can work with and you get to actually see the person perform on the job. And the way I think about it is, you know, imagine you had a choice between six interviews or six months of performance review. What do you think is gonna help you make a better decision about the employee? Um, and the apprenticeship model really gives you that benefit. And so it's a, I would say a near zero percent chance of a bad hire because you're actually working with the person, you're seeing what they're doing. Um, yeah. And I think that this is a, one of the major tools that agencies can use to frankly change the face of advertising for the better. Um, the, we had an example uh, at one of the conferences uh, that Marlon and the team ran and it was in Chicago and I was very lucky to have um, one of our apprentices who uh, works at WPP at one of their agencies there. Uh, she spoke, she, I had her join me and it was, it was quite extemporaneous, um, but her name is Michelle. She, this was her, if she didn't have Catalyte and the four A's like sort of help her get into the industry. Um, she was honest, she's like, I'm not sure what I'd be doing right now. But now, you know, I'm a Latina first generation on my way. She's been employee of the month, uh, two out of the first five months that she's been on the job. Um, she was presenting with me in, uh, you know, I still call it the Sears Tower, right? And her whole family is so proud of her. And she's so proud that they're proud of her. That this is like just one example of thousands, frankly, that we've seen sort of go through our program and have, you know, like hopefully life-changing success. 
And I can tell you right now, the agency couldn't be more proud to have her on the team because she's going to be a future leader of the company. Um, and w- what I think is different maybe from some of the other work that's going on here is we're not talking about one-offs or um, you know, a, a specialized program. This partnership allows agencies to do this kind of work at scale using like the latest in data and AI in an ethical way to find net new talent to help bring them into our industry and help you, you know, frankly, build your business. Uh, we're in digital media now, and then thanks to the four A's, we're also moving into um, other roles in the creative space, potentially like with project management and others, which is just the start uh, of the partnership. So I just want to underscore that Matt said when he talked about, you know, six interviews or six months, uh, I call it the try before you buy model because you don't generally get that opportunity to have someone on the job working with you for six or long, six months or longer. And then you get to make the decision if you want to hire them full time or not. That's very different and a real opportunity for anyone to take advantage of this program. Marla, uh, I know it's early stage and, and you've this has just been out to your members recently, but what is the response of your members? And uh, how do you feel the activation of the Catalyte relationship is going? So I'll go back to this started as a real desire from our board to create this offering because they are hungering for new ways and new avenues to access talent. These are people that have the right attitude and the aptitude. They just need the skills training to go along with that. And that's what Catalyte brings. So the conference that Matt is referencing is our annual management practitioners forum that's geared toward our independent agency members. And Matt was in our survey, one of the top performing speakers and sessions. And we had such interest coming out of that. At the end of the day, Matt was there. We had a cocktail party and everyone was buzzing because they could not think fast enough about how do we take advantage of this? And then he's already got pressure on, well, can you please get that cohort ready for project management and account management? And can we start looking at other areas like production and content creation? So there's a real hunger and appetite because these these leaders, that's largely who comes to this particular conference, they are so hungry to find new avenues for talent because they know how challenging it's been. So they're very excited, but they also understand that it addresses one of their core goals around diversity. And again, a broader way of looking at this and bringing in a more mature worker who As Matt said, the loyalty and the ability to have greater retention is so important. It costs companies a lot of money every time someone leaves. And especially at that entry level, there is very high turnover. So the more that you can mitigate that risk and start Mm -hmm. extending that time and keeping those employees longer, that's better for your bottom line. Costs an average of of 30% of the salary to replace someone who leaves. You mentioned, Matt, the the expanding out and and the broad uh, depth and uh, breadth of of talent that's available that may not have a college degree. But as uh, our colleague uh, Kirk McDonald at Group M mentioned, when he came into the business, he he had not completed college and did not have a degree, in, de- degree until recently. And so the first thing he did at Group M was to eliminate the requirement for a college degree. But yet many in our industry still uh, make that a, a criteria for even consideration. What's the status in our industry of uh, eliminating that requirement or at least uh, changing the requirements to accept those who may not have a degree. Yeah. I mean, Kirk's been an amazing, uh, you know, obviously a role model for this approach and uh, an amazing champion. And uh, I don't think we're anywhere near where we need to be on this because there's there's the written law, which maybe there is a requirement that's dropped, but then there's the, the bias of, you know, what do we prefer and what are we used to? And that sort of interview that starts with, oh, you went there, do you know so-and-so, you know? Um, We've all been, those of us who are, uh, have a college degree have, have had those situations. And uh, I think that is very pervasive still in our industry. And it's going to take 
a lot of champions really challenging the status quo, uh, like Kurt is, like the four A's is doing, a Jack like you do to support sort of, you know, a more, I think, expansive way to think about talent in order for us to bring our industry into its full potential. Um, I'll tell you, it's it's an interesting, Gallup did a study a couple of years ago that I found personally uh, landed with me. They asked employers, how prepared uh, do you feel college graduates are on the first day of work for the job they're doing? And employers uh, said, on a scale of 10, I would rate it a one. And uh, they go ahead and ask college administrators, how prepared do you think your graduates are for the job on day one? And the administrators, shockingly, thought that nine out of 10 would be a score that they would apply to that. So you have this like huge gap. And I'm not against college in any way, um, but I am against using it as a singular sort of filter for what may, what is a potential for someone to be successful in a advertising career. And I think that's sort of where we're trying to really shake the status quo. And uh, most people I've talked to, that kind of stat that I described from the Gallup study, like they understand it, right? There's a very big gap that I call it the last mile between, you know, someone graduating or, you know, coming and then joining the workforce. That's actually super critical. Um, and I, I think that opens up a huge opportunity for us to sort of show folks that there, there's many ways to approach talent at this stage of their career. So um, I think we have a lot of work to do, Jack, to answer your question. The data and the, um, the frankly, the ability of programs like the four A's and Catalyte are doing to make it very easy for companies to do this um, will help us continue to make progress. You, you mentioned the difference between internships and apprenticeships. And every July, we have National Interns Day. We should make that National Interns and Apprentices Day uh, to recognize that. Uh, apprenticeship is something that's been around for a lot longer than internships yeah. have. Uh, so we certainly should recognize that. Compounding the statistics you just shared is, is the reality that uh, in the HBCU community of 105 HBCUs, fewer than a half dozen have a, an organized advertising curriculum. Uh, and, and only, I think, two or three have majors available in advertising. So even the opportunity in, in that community for those who are in college and uh, to learn about advertising as a career is troubled. How do we address that issue as well? And is that something that's even on the radar to address? It's clearly an opportunity because there are so many different avenues for young people to pursue these days. And so we have to ensure that advertising, marketing, communications is still the vibrant industry that attracts people, but more importantly, retains them. But what I think is exciting about what Matt's saying is these are people that are interested in our industry and have always been curious. They've just never felt that it was for them. And so now there's a door open very wide to allow them to come into this business. And that's where we have to start thinking differently. And I agree with Matt. We dropped our four-year college degree requirement. A lot of agencies have, but does that mean that the bias is gone? No, because you still have people that have grown up in that way, have those experiences. And so we need to start changing the dynamic within the agencies to create that acceptance, but to shift the overall composition of the talent that's there and show the success of what can happen when you bring people in and you actually train them in a very different way. And yet it can still yield the same, if not better results. So we know where the country is moving. All right. And this is not a polarizing political statement. The facts are the facts. Like we are becoming a much more uh, diverse country and for advertising agencies that hopefully are laser focused on their consumers and what they care about it's it's imperative that you actually have teams that represent the consumers that you're trying to talk to um and so you know this absolutely it is i think a huge bottom up opportunity for us to get fresh new talent that 
frankly, it's very different perspectives and understandings and points of view to bring into the conversations. And fortunately, I think most clients are moving in that direction. Um, you know, I'm hearing that in the pitches that there is a lot of questions about like, what does my team look like? You know, how, how, how am I going to make sure that they, but both from a number standpoint, and by the way, 80% of the apprentices that come through our program are from underrepresented communities. But, but from a business perspective, like the, the idea that you're going to get folks that have a different point of view, a point of view that, frankly, from a legacy perspective, our industry wouldn't be positioned well to do. So I, I do, I'm like 100% on that. And just to build on, Marla used a word, and I, it made me just think of this. She used the word yield. And there's no industry to me that is in a better position to take advantage of this opportunity than the advertising industry, simply because, in my mind, the talent problem is a marketing problem. And if you are constantly going after the same pools of consumers and competing with all of your other you know, competitors for that same pool of talent instead of consumers in this perspective, you're gonna end up with uh, lower returns, lower yield, higher cost. I mean, it's the first thing you would do as an advertising professional say, have you thought about expanding your target market? And we're not talking about a, a, a percentage increase. We're talking about like a 20X increase in the amount of people that we could potentially target to bring through the talent pipeline and ultimately um, the best of the best will end up sitting within your organization and helping you win more business, drive better results for your customer. I, I just want the, I'm gonna pick on uh, the HR departments. I want them to start thinking like marketers because I think the future chief HR officer is gonna have a, a point of view that is probably a lot more like a great marketer um, than a sort of classic um, HR professional. Or there'll be a really powerful hybrid here. And who better than the agencies to sort of lead, in my mind, not to be you know, over the top on this, but like the American economy and like how you wanna think about this, how you wanna lead in the talent. Cause it is ultimately in my mind about getting the largest possible group of people that are willing and ready to make an impact in your business. You know, if we go back you know, back to the cable days. I'm going to really uh, probably show my age here. But, you know, if you were had 20 cable networks that could, you know, increase your reach by 30, 40%, and you're still only buying the three classic broadcast networks, you'd be fired. But yet today, most people are still fishing off the same pier when it comes for talent. And, you know, in our parlance, it's like, why wouldn't you open that up to so many other thousands of other opportunities to get that talent and give yourself the best chance to be successful. That's very consistent with the work we're doing at Media Village, which is taking that supply chain issue. If the audits we do show that the brand marketers are well ahead of the agency community in terms of advancing diversity, the agencies are really, to your points, uh, kept playing catch up pretty quickly. The supply chain should extend over and needs to extend over to the media companies also. Matt, I would like you to drill down and, and go into the woods a bit with uh, Adelite and tell us exactly what your model is. Marla described you as being state of the art and head of the class, so to speak. Uh, what are the tools and resources that you've applied to create that leadership? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll try to use a concrete example so uh, folks who are watching or listening can uh, can make it very real for them. So, um, you know, we, we work with uh, Zenith, amazing agency that I've worked with for, you know, decades at this point, um, you know, on, on building out a programmatic digital buyer uh, cohort for them. Uh, the way it starts is we understand, starting with the agency, what are the exact skills that you need for this role? Very personalized, very customized. You know, we have partnerships with Google and the Trade Desk and many others to get all the right tools in place so folks are day one ready. Once we're clear on that, we uh, start with uh, a, a AI driven uh, sourcing tool. We literally go into our nonprofit partners. We work a lot with the veterans communities. Uh, we work with the 110 group. Uh, we also uh, use job boards like Indeed and LinkedIn. And you'll see some opportunity. We'll say something like, uh, advertising professional, no experience required. And from there, candidates come and actually take a two hour assessment. It's pretty intense. And the things we're looking for there are learning agility, um, grit, tenacity, um, ability to problem solve. And it gives us, a, it, by no means is it a, a, an end all be all, but it's a very powerful predicted, 
ability of someone's likelihood of being really successful. From there, um, they'll go through a process of interviewing with us and um, getting into the process where they'll be invited into the cohort. Uh, we typically get tens of thousands of people who take our assessment for these types of roles. So like I said, there is so much talent there. One of the bittersweet things about our program right now for me is that um, so many people have an interest of getting into our industry and I have only so many spots to actually provide them, um, which uh, for on the one side, you know, it ensures an incredible amount of quality that leads to 90% conversion rate. On the other side, we have a lot of work to do to find out how we can help these people continue their journey. Um, but so in the Zenith example, they'll go through a cohort, it's customized training, it's 10 weeks. During that period, they're paid state minimum wage. So think about that, uh, you know, instead of paying for like a boot camp, we're actually, Catalyte is paying them uh, state minimum wage. And what happens there is uh, one, it just feels like the right thing to do, but it, it allows us also to get a really incredible quality of person who otherwise might not be able to just like pay uh, to or leave a job, they have requirements. So during that, for the digital media, it's typically eight to 10 weeks, they're paid their state minimum wage while they're learning, and then they show up at Zenith. And they're day one ready, they're billing. They're, the woman I'm thinking of, is her name's Katara. Uh, I hope she watches this. Uh, she, you know, she went from running a small retail shop at a mall. Uh, she managed a P&L. She had people on her, you know, that reported to her, um, but she was pretty capped. And now she's buying media for Hulu and, uh, you know, is going and learning about all these new shows. And she's like, I can't wait to continue to learn. I want to go into marketing. This is my career. This is my calling. And um, the, the Zenith will work with Katara and her cohort uh, for up to several months, you know, typically six months is what we usually have. They get to see the performance of the person. We stay with, um, there, there are employees because they're apprentices with Zenith. Uh, we are helping manage on a weekly basis, like getting everyone ready, continuing the skilling and upskilling, working with the, the manager. We want to make this very easy on the agency. Um, this shouldn't be a burden. Like sometimes I'm not picking on internships, but sometimes it, it is a lot to sort of manage that. Um, it should feel very natural. Um, and then at the end of the apprenticeship, 90% of the folks are going to come and be full-time employees and they're experienced life-changing sort of opportunity to build a career in advertising. Hopefully that makes it real, Jack. Uh, oh, oh, maybe a little stat for, for folks. Um, the typical apprentice moves from making roughly $30,000 a year uh, and within five years is making $98,000 a year. So when I talk about life-changing sort of income for the folks that are going through the program, the data supports that. So on a personal basis, Matt, I'd love to see you make the, uh, the what you're, you're paying apprentices a, a minimum of $15 an hour. Uh, I'm working on it, Jack. Believe all me. All right. Uh, uh, the more agencies that I get to support, the more I'm 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 happy to share. Uh, we're we're definitely a, you know, we're on our way. But yes, I agree with you. And how for both of you are once the the apprentice is in a role in a position, a couple of things. How are you preparing the employers uh, for the conversation to embrace them and the organization to accept in, uh, this talent and make them feel like they belong in, in the community. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of things that sort of, uh, I would call they're not the sexiest part of what we do, but I think they're some of the most important one, the, the majority of our teachers, um, at Catalyte that are preparing our apprentices. And this is a, across digital media, across, um, software engineering, they have, uh, gone through our program. So they actually have gone through the program, gone into corporations, been successful, and chosen to come back. Um, probably not making as much as they could otherwise, because it's a quite fulfilling uh, part of the mm -hmm. job to work uh, on uh, with these incredible people. And um, I think that that gives us a, a, a real edge in preparing our apprentices for what what's going to be maybe in some cases very natural, and in other cases very new and different. Um, you know, if you're a teacher or a nurse, uh, you probably have had one on ones. You've probably had feedback sessions. Um, but, you know, if you're uh, you know, if you've been working in some other organizations, maybe you have it. And like we practice that we prepare them. Um, and on the other end, we have um, a, apprentice success uh, managers that work directly with the employer to let them know the patterns and the success and the best practices. And again, the, I think the key is we take it. We want to make this easy. Like we don't want to make this hard. 
um, this should be a, this should be a really positive experience for the manager in particular. So, you know, not, in addition to sort of sharing best practices, we actually have conversations with them. We get weekly feedback on both the sort of technical skills as well as the call it the team and communication skills of the apprentices as they're working through the program. So we can constantly get that feedback going and create a, frankly, a, a culture of trust where you can sort of have conversations about how to get better and how to improve. Um, and that's led to ultimately the metric that we measure that I think is the, the ultimate is what level, what a percentage of people that are in our program at the employer are going and being hired full time. And, and we're at 90% right now. I want to see that improve, but that's a relative to hiring from the outside or an internship where the, you know, the, the probability of a really successful outcome um, tends to be significantly lower than 90%. Yeah. We're also helping with using some of our content from our learning institute. For example, we have an agency fundamentals course that's a certificate. We want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to ensure the success of these people within the agency. And so just helping them understand, well, how do agencies really work beyond just what your core day-to-day -day function is going to be is also incredibly helpful. It's one of these issues and challenges that you can't, like, even when I, we don't really have a lot of competition, so to speak, because um, it's, it's a relatively, if you're a venture capitalist or like an investor, you would call our model, the, the higher train deploy model is, is there, there's not that much, there, I'm sure it will get very crowded over the next five, 10 years. But, but you do it differently of, too, which is yeah. one of the things we appreciated because a lot of the models that are out there are full year apprenticeships. And it's ongoing training. And the reality is agencies don't have the time for That's that. Right. They need people to be ready day one and they need to be able to commit to a full-time role. And as much as they're going to invest in some training for them and some learning and development opportunities, they don't have the ability to let them have a full day per week doing ongoing apprenticeship training. Yeah. I, and for us, I, we really believe in partnership in a in a deep way. Like we, we you cannot change the status quo in industry alone. And uh, we're, you know, the four has got you know the 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 MAPE program is just legendary. Uh, if you work in the advertising industry, it's like, uh, you know, some of the greatest people in our industry have gone through that program. And I'm such a supporter. So there's just such a legacy of working at this. And I think this is just like another big arrow in the quiver of the forays to sort of help solve this problem, probably at, at a scale that, you know, would be difficult to do on your own. And certainly for us, you know, we would never be able to get the reach and connection and the, 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 the platform uh, without the partnership of the forays, as well as the insights about what do agencies really need? I think my biggest fear, I have a little bit of a fear here for the big, like bigger agencies where, you know, everyone actually, I think has their heart in the right place and they want to do this, right? Um, but it, what can happen is everyone ends up doing their own thing. And, you know, when the economy turns, suddenly things get like sort of cut back and then things just sort of don't continue the way they should. We're, hopefully with partnerships with the four A's, what we're trying to say is you don't necessarily have to do it all yourself. All we do is apprenticeships at Catalyte. You know, this is, we have a technology based powered approach to this. This is like, we're very, very specialized in this. Like it might be easier for us to maybe do some of the lifting for you um, and then pick your spots where you actually want to take it and make it like, you know, your last mile as an agency. It probably will cost less money than building up your own team. And frankly, if everyone's building their own thing around this, it, it's not quite very differentiated. So let's focus on the outcomes. Um, let's allow some specialization, whether it's, you know, our firm or some others, but to come in and help us really get the scale um, and the efficiencies that allow us to make sure that we don't take our foot off the gas in this important issue. Well, under the Media Village Education Foundation, we're in the field right now with a major study. We have over 5,000 responses from the industry, 65% of uh, whom are uh, in the business fewer than seven years. So we really have a, uh, a great litmus test on where the readiness and pre preparation is of those in the industry to do business. What we've also learned over the last several years is in corporate America, not just in our industry, uh, the average time spent preparing for a meeting is 15 minutes. And so your point, Marla, on uh, a 12 week apprentice program versus a uh, 52 week is is relevant. 
as is the the importance of recognizing that long form education, online education, the one hour to 18 hour type coursework, the compliance rates, Matt, you probably know better than I do, but are pretty low, five, 10 percent uh, on completion. Uh, even under a compliance requirement. So uh, the models have to change, are changing. That's why we've launched meetingprep.ai as a short form on-demand online learning tool. Uh, we've done, you've done a great job in telling the story as, a, as last thoughts to give your uh, strongest argument of why the industry as a whole needs to begin really relooking at the way we recruit our our teams, retain our teams, and the work you're doing, so that as many people who might be watching this uh, are compelled to follow up and how they follow up to learn more about the programs. I'll just sure. say, talent is the number one asset for any agency, and as a leader. Your title may be chief executive officer, but you really are the chief people officer too. And you have to think about the types of people that you're bringing in, how you're training those people, how you're elevating them, and what are the costs when you have high attrition. That's a real impact, not just on your agency, but in your client service environment, that's a real challenge in order to continue to grow your business. So you need to focus in on your people and how you help them and bringing in the best talent that actually is ready to go, that will have some loyalty and will start to change the composition and the diversity is so critical. It's what every leader needs to be doing. It shouldn't even be a question. It's just a question of how fast can we go to really accelerate this and embrace it. So I think if you're an agency leader, right now you, you have to ask yourself like do I, when it comes to talent uh when it comes to uh, access to opportunity um and competitiveness in a you know of demographics that are changing in america do you want to lead or follow and if you want to follow go ahead continue down with the classic spray and pray on linkedin um you know working wreck to wreck uh, probably overpaying for a very homogeneous group of people that aren't going to really give you a competitive advantage over the long term, or start experimenting with dropping the degree in, in a real, real way. Um, start experimenting with partnerships like the four A's and understanding how like they're learning from the best agencies, like what is really happening and, and maybe even consider, you know, something that is, is quite radically different, which is, you know, using AI to help unlock net new talents of pool oceans of talent that otherwise you never would have spoken to and see what happens. I think um, anyone who tries this program, again, the retention on the people is incredible. The retention on the customers is also very high. So I think once we get people to start, the, we'll be very successful. And Jack, to, to, to tie it back to something that might feel a little over the top, but I, I actually think it's true if you sort of step back and look at the economy in America, like, you know, if we don't provide opportunity and more access uh, to every American, I think we actually put ourselves at quite a disadvantage um, from an economic point of view on the global stage. And, uh, you know, certainly the advertising industry is only one part of that, but it's a big part. And it has an incredible amount of influence with the C-suite at major corporations all around. So I, I look at it as from, uh, from a democracy standpoint, uh, I want, I know that a, a very powerful economy that allows everyone to participate in is a good thing for our country. And I think we're at a point now where um, we need to be really intentional about how we think about that and make action around that. And I think the agencies have a chance to actually lead, which getting back to your point where the, you know, the interest in the agencies and maybe their influence with customers has deteriorated a little bit over time. This is one of the big issues that they can absolutely lead on. Um, and I think that they could move our whole country in the right direction. Now I sound like I'm running for office, so I'll stop. Uh, but that, well, I, the, I, I mean, the it. gospel of democratizing opportunity is one that is absolutely essential across every industry, advertising, media especially, uh, not just because we love it and we're here, but because of all 15 industries, we rate 
toward the bottom in all the metrics of the concerns that you've been so eloquent describing. So Marla Kaplowitz, as always, thank you. Matt Durella, there is a lot more to unpack in what you're doing and a lot more opportunity for Catalyte and the work you're doing in our industry. Thank you. Thank you for joining me on Legends and Leadership. Thanks, Jack. Thank you.